today I'm going to be teaching you how to use remote event, remote function, bindable event, and bindable function. These are all objects that allow different scripts to communicate with each other. So we'll start off with remote event and remote function. Both of these objects communicate between the client and the server and vice versa. So let's say we want to create a local script that will uh, communicate to the server like a string that says hello world and we want the server to print uh, our string that we sent to the server in replicated storage we should create a remote event and you should probably put all of these objects in replicated storage you can also create a folder for all of the signals to be more organized but i'm just gonna put in replicated storage so now let's say game dot replicated storage dot remote event and then we want to use a method called fire server and then let's say if we want to include some data we can include any data i'm just going to include a string that says hello world and then let's create a script and server script service and then we're going to create a an event signal let's say game dot replicated stores dot remote event and then we're going to use this event called on server event connect function and then we're going to have two parameters the first parameter is the player which is basically the player that sent the communication and then the next parameter is our data which is basically the data that we sent which is going to be a string that says hello world so now let's print the player and then the data this should hopefully say my username and then hello world so now if we play test this as you can see we have our player and then we have a string that says hello world so that's basically remote event and then we can also do the same thing from the server to the client so let's say we want to do game dot replicate source our remote event let's say we want to communicate to the client let's use fire client and then we got to specify the player uh let me actually let's say let's wait 10 seconds to let the player load and then we want to specify the players so i'm just going to do game.players mr tumbleweed uh, i guess change it to yours if you're following this tutorial and then let's say we want to include a string that says i guess foo bar and then in the local script let's create uh an event signal called game.replicate store as a remote event and let's say dot on client event connect function and then we just this time instead of including the player we just include the data so let's say data here as a variable and then we just want to print data so theoretically after 10 seconds we should have our client print foo bar so now if we play test this if we wait 10 seconds it should say it So, okay so now it says foo bar after 10 seconds so that's working and you don't have to specify a specific player you can also send a signal to every player in the server so let's say fire all clients and we want all clients to print foo bar from the local script so for fire all clients we don't have to specify any players so now if we play test this uh, if we wait 10 seconds Okay, nice. It still prints foobar. So it should print that for everyone now. And we don't have to include only one piece of data. We can actually include as many pieces of data as we want. So let's say let's split hello world up. So let's create the first string, which is hello. And then let's separate that with a comma. So on our second parameter, let's say world. So now we have two pieces of data. So one hello and one world. So now if we go to server, uh, since there's two pieces of data, we need to include a second argument. So let's call this data one and then data two. So data one should be hello and data two should be world. And let's print both of these. So if we play test this now, as you can see, we have hello and then we have world as two separate strings. So yeah, that's basically a remote event. It's just one way communication from one context to another, which is either a local script or server script. So that's a remote event. And then now let's go to remote function. Remote functions are used as two way communication instead of one way. So a remote event might just be a local script communicating to a script, while a remote function might be a local script communicating to a server script. 
and then the service script returns something back to the local script, which can be used for something like retrieving data that can only be accessed by the server, but we need that data from a local script. So let's say game.replicate storage dot remote function. And then this time we use a method called invoke server. We don't really need any data to specify. So let's just not put any data there. And let's also create a variable for it. So local result equals game.replicate storage dot remote function invoke server. So now we want to request some data from the server and then we're going to store that data as a result. So now let's do a game dot replicate source at remote function dot on server invoke equals function player. And then since we didn't include any data, we're just, we don't need a second parameter. So now this is a callback function instead of an event listener. And because this is a callback function, we cannot have more than one callback function from the same remote function from the same context, which means we cannot have two server side callbacks for the same remote function otherwise it will cause an error because it won't know which callback to call to return the value so let's just say we want to return a random number between 1 and 10 so now we're going to return that and then we're going to store that value as a result and then we can just print results so if we play test this as you can see, we got nine from the server and then we can do the same thing for the client. So I'm just going to change this to five seconds. So let's do game.replicated storage.remote function. And then we do invoke clients, game.players, Mr. Tumbleweed, my username. And then we want to get a result from that. So we'll go result equals and then this stuff. Okay. So now from the client, let's do game.replicated storage.remote function dot on client invoke equals function. Let's say we want to return who bar, I guess. So we want to print that. We're asking my player for some data. We return foo bar as a string and then we print foo bar. And I should mention there's no such thing as invoke all clients. We don't know which data from which person to use since we can only store data from one person, similar to why we can't have multiple callbacks. So now if we test this. Okay, so. As you can see from the server, we printed foobar. So yeah, that's remote function. And now uh, let's get to bindable event and then bindable function. So let's create, let's create both of these, I guess. So as you can see, uh, it just said function and event. So bindable events and bindable functions will be communicating between different scripts in the same context. So basically you could have a script communicating with another script, or you could have a local script communicating with another local script. So let's say we want to create another script. So let's just call this script two, I guess. And I'll say game.replicated storage dot event dot e event, I guess this is Actually, I might, I might change uh, this, these names to be more readable for this tutorial. Okay. So game no replicate source dot bindable event dot event connect function. Let's say we want to print some sort of data. So let's say print the data here. Let me actually clear all of this stuff so the output doesn't get too confusing. So now in our new script, let's wait uh, five seconds because we don't want to fire this script before this other script gets a chance to uh, set up this event listener. So after we wait five seconds, let's just wait one second. Let's do game dot replicate source dot bindable event fire and let's just say hello world so our script 2 is gonna get that event and then it's just gonna print hello world so if we play test this as you can see we got hello world so that's basically a bindable event and then bindable function is very similar to remote function let's say cannot replicate source dot bindable function invoke actually let me create a variable for that so local result equals let's put some data like let's say uh, math.random 1 to 10 and then let's say we have any a callback so game dot allocated storage dot bindable function dot on invoke equals function and then we have some data and let's say we, we want to return a negative version of that data so let's say negative data so if we have four it's going to return negative four and then we can print our results so if we run that as you see, uh, our server picked nine and then we got negative nine in return. So yeah, that's basically a bindable function. So yeah, I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you on the next video.